this is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make this little daisy bracelet um, with the multicolored strand that's in the Sparkling Romance treasure bag. However, these are just 4 by 3 rondelles and you can make them all different colors or you can make the flowers all the same color. It doesn't truly matter. We'll discuss that further in the video. So you can do this with the stuff in your stash. It's just seed beads and 4 by 3 rondelles. So I'm going to take this off real quick, see if I can do it fast enough, and I will show you what it looks like. But it's a lobster cloth, so give me a second, and if I can't do it, I'll come back and show it to you. And I can't do it. Be right back. Okay, so here it is, and I just wanted to show you, look a little close up here, these are five petal flowers, so of course each unit is a little bit different. I had to do two different types of extensions to keep this balanced, and I will explain that more in the video. But the, the extension here is smaller than the extension here, and it just makes for a really well-balanced, really pretty little bracelet. So let's go ahead and look and see what it takes to make this particular bracelet and get started. Okay, for this project today, we will be using the 4x3 millimeter rondelle strand of pastel multicolors that was in the Sparkling Romance treasure bag. However, you can use any 4x3 rondelles you want to use for this. These are all very basic things that you should have in your stash, so you can make this project regardless. Now I have taken my strand and I have separated out the translucent colors and I'm just going to use the opaques and I've put them in piles here which we'll discuss in a second. But <clears throat> the translucents in this particular design don't pop as well, you don't see the flowers as well, and they're also see-through so you can see all the passes of thread we do in this and we do quite a few passes. So the translucents I don't necessarily recommend. If you're going to use a translucent, use a dark translucent like an indigo or a ruby or something like that and that will work fine but not the real light ones. Then we're going to use 80, 11, 0, and 15 o seed beads, and I just have a few 15 o's because I think I'm only going to use them on the very end, so I probably will only use about two. And you don't have to have them at all if you don't want to. I'm using a lobster claw clasp and a jump ring for this. You can use wire guardians if you would like to also. And I am using Sweet Blush, so it's the Galvanized Permanent Finish Sweet Blush in the 80, 11, 0, and 15, 0. With my strand, what I have done is I have separated them out into little piles, so this is going to be each flower. Each flower has five beads, so I just want to make sure that I have all of my colors and enough in each color to make my full strand. So I have laid them out. I have 11 piles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, yes, 11. This is going to make about a seven, seven and a quarter inch bracelet, depending upon the size of your clasping. So you'll want to make sure that you have plenty. Now, this is going to be 55 beads in total. Then I'm going to use some fire line. I'm going to use 6 pound fire line. You can also use 8 or 10 pound nano fill. That will work just fine. Nothing bigger than a 6 pound fire line, simply because we're going to sew through these beads a lot. Then I'm using a size 12 beading needle, and I've put onto my needle a full wingspan, which is about four and a half, five feet, something like that, onto my needle. You're going to need to extend your fire line during this project, so if you do not know how to do that, I will put a video link that you can reference in the video description in the box, the description box beneath the video player so that if you need to learn how to extend your fire line, you can click that link and it will show you on a video how to do that. So let me go ahead and get organized and we will get started. Okay, to start this project, grab one of your little piles of five beads and you're going to pick up three of them and an 8 seed bead onto your needle. Then we're just going to bring this 
down to the end of the thread. You don't have to leave a really long tail, but you need to leave enough to hold on to and make sure your beads don't slip off. Now you're going to come back through all three of the rondelles from the tail side, ignoring the 8 seed bead. And then you're just going to pull your thread through. Once you've got it to this point, then grab your working thread and your tail thread, put them together, and just kind of pull everything into shape. So this is what you should have, just like this. Now we are going to pick up the remaining two rondelles. We're going to bypass the 8 seed bead, and we're going to go into this bead here where the tail is, and we're just going to hold on to everything, kind of hold on to that tail too. Hold it tight so that it stays together and pull your thread through. And once you've pulled it through, you're going to have a mess like this. <laughs> then you're going to pull on your tail and you're going to pull on your working thread, turn it over, and your 8 seed bead should be popping up. If it's not, then as we sew through, we'll pop it up just like this. Now we're going to sew all the way around this again to make sure that it's secure and stays together well. And it's going to goof up and get all weird looking as you do this, that's okay. As you come through each bead, you just give a little tug and they start to snug up together and start to form your flower really nicely. Now you want to sew all the way past the tail thread. So we're going into this bead here. Now we're where our tail thread is. I'm just going to tuck it aside and I'm going to go into this bead here. And pull tight. Now I am going to make a connection for my clasping and then we'll move down and make our next units. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up two 11 -0 seed beads and an 8 -0, and then we're going to go through our clasp. So I've got two 11 -0s and an 8 -0 on my needle here. I'm going to drop it down to my piece and then I'm going to go through my clasp. It's got string in it. There we go. And I'm just going to drop it down to that first 8 -0 right there. And then I am now going to go through the 8 -0 and the first 11 0, ignoring the second 11 0. So I'm just going to go down through these two beads here. I'm going to pick it up and hold on to it. And I am going to pull my clasp down pull everything together just like this and this is what you should have now we're going to pick up another 11 0 seed bead if I can get one and then we're going to go into the petal bead next to the one that we're attached to so we've attached here we're now going to go into this petal bead here and stab yourself don't stab yourself it hurts that did not feel good. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm popping this little 11 0 down nice and tight next to the other one. And I have to sew all the way around the flower and come back around so that I can um, secure my clasping. But I want to get rid of this tail now. So I'm just going to get rid of that tail and pick up my flower and start sewing back around until I get back to my seed beads for my clasping. I'm going to go through two of them here. And if you can, you can go up through the seed beads at the same time. It's a little easier, actually, as you slide through the rondelles. And I'm just going to go up through the 11 -0 here, and then the 11 -0 under the 8 -0, through the 8 -0 into the clasp, like this. Get it organized there. And I'm going to pull it through. And now I'm going to go... I'm 
in my clasp, I'm going to go into the 8 0, the 11 0 under it, and then the other 11 0 on the side from which we just did, on the opposite side, just like this. And I'm going to pull it through. Now, we have to sew all the way around the flower and do that one more time. So let's go ahead and do that off camera, and when we come back, we will continue. Okay, so now I've secured my clasping, and I'm coming out of this bead right here after coming through. So, you can see this little thread bridge right here. So we're going to sew around this flower one more time and add a 15 0 seed bead right there just to clean that up a little bit, and then we'll move on. So, yes, we're sewing through this unit a lot, but it is our first unit, it needs to be secure, and it doesn't hurt anything to sew through it. So let's sew through one more time. And we're going to get all the way up to these top beads here. So the two beads that have the 11 O's attached to them for the clasping, that's the two that we're going to place a 15 O seed bead between. So I'm coming out of this one here. I'm going to pick up a 15 0. You can also use an 11 0. That's fine too. But we're going to put a 15 0 here and then go into this bead on this side, just like this. Pop that down in there, nice and tight. And then I'm going to continue sewing into the next bead. So on this next unit, as you can see, if you look at your flower, you have two beads on the top and you have three beads on the bottom the way it's positioned. That's going to happen every other bead. So now we have to work through these two side ones and we'll ignore this middle bead to balance everything out. So for this next unit, we're going to pick up three 11 0 seed beads and then we're going to pick up an 8 0 and then three 11 0 seed beads. Once you've picked that combination up, you're then going to get your next pile of colors that you wanted to use, and I think I'm going to go with blue. So we're going to grab these three, these five beads, one, two, three, four, five, and we're going to pick up three of them. And then we're going to pick up an 8-0 and I'll show you what I have on my needle. So I have three 11 O's, an 8 O, three 11 O's, three rondelles, and an 8 O, just like that. I'm going to bring this all down to my unit. I'm going to position this, making sure that I'm on the proper side because this, it can get turned around and then your 8 O seed beads will be popped on one side and not on the other. So make sure you're on the right side. Hold it to where your first rondelle is touching those 11 O seed beads, just like this. And then come around with your needle and go through the top of that rondelle. You can pull your working thread to make sure it stays there, just like this. I'm holding everything together and then I'm just going to pull these rondelles around. Just like this. Now if it slides away or it doesn't come up neatly, you can pull on this 8 seed bead just like this and then you can pull on your working thread and you can rearrange it. You can pull it closer to the 11 O's, you can make it neater, whatever you need to do. Now I'm going to just turn this little guy over and you can see I have half of my flower. I need to make the other half. So in order to do that, I need to sew up to the seed bead next to the 8 0. So I'm going to go through, or not the seed bead, through the rondelle. So I'm going to go through, I'm coming out of this one, I'm going to go through this one, and then this one. Now I need to pick up two more beads to finish my five petals. So pick up two. I'm going to bypass this 8 seed bead and I'm going to go into this bead here from the side where the 11 seed beads are. So right here. Let me back off. I'm way too close and it is blurry. So right here. Now 
Now it's going to be a mess. Don't worry about that. As we sew through, we'll straighten it up. So now we're going to start sewing through the petals here. And as you pull, you can just pop that 80 up. Sometimes it argues with you more than other times. And you just have to just mess with it until it does what you want it to do. And now I'm all the way around. But I have to go completely around. So I can't just stop here and attach on the opposite side. I have to go all the way around. So I'm going to continue going around all of my beads. I'm trying to hold it where you can see, but you know, that's kind of, it's just so wobbly. So I'm going to go all the way around. until I come out the opposite bead on on the opposite side from the bead that we attach to. So we're coming out the opposite bead right there. Make sure it doesn't twist because it will. And now we're going to pick up three 11 O's and come through this 8 O. So we're going to pick up three 11 O seed beads And then we're just going to go through this 8 o seed bead here. Right in the middle. And it's just, everything's just arguing with me today. I mean, just everything. So let me get that through there, just like that. And I'm going to pull these down. So it should split over that one bead on top there. Now we need to connect the other side. So we need to pick up three more 11 ounce seed beads and we're going to go into the bead opposite from the one that we're already attached to. So there will be a naked little bead in the middle here and we're going to go through the bead on the other side of it. Just like this. Now we have to sew through this unit one more time, so we're going to sew through these beads, come through to here, sew down in a diagonal through all of these seed beads into this bead here. So now I'm going to continue sewing through this unit, and as I come through the top here, I'll just pass through this little 15-0 that I put on. And then I'll continue. Okay, go through there. And these beads don't really get thread tight. It's just the angle I was dealing with there. Now I'm coming through this bead. I'm going to pick up the three 11 O's right underneath it, just like this. And then I'll go into this 8 O and the three 11 O's on this side. So just in a diagonal, just like this. That way it keeps it balanced. If you go through one side completely, it pulls it kind of funny and then you have to go through the other side to pull it back. So that's why we're going in the diagonal. Then we're going to go into the flower petal here. And now, as you can see, on this unit, I do not have one bead in the middle, I have two. So if you split these units in half, you will have three on one side and two on the other. We started here where we had two, so we put our clasping between the two, and then we had three on the bottom side of this one, so we attached and made three on the top side of this one. Now this one has two, so we have to make another unit like our clasping. So we're going to sew down into the two bottom beads right between them. So we're centered on the flower here. Just like this. 
Now we're going to pick up an 11 o seed bead and an 8 o seed bead and then another 11 o seed bead and drop it down. Then we're going to pick up our next color grouping. Let's do white. I'm going to pick up three white roundels. That one has a goofy spot. I'm going to get rid of it. Pick up three of your roundels and an 8 and drop it down. Now we're going to pick up our beads. We're going to hold that first bead just like this so I can pull on my thread and I can make sure everything's tight. Hold on to that and then come back up through that first bead where the 11 O's are on that side. Right there. Just like that. Now you can see it's traveled up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this 8 O seed bead and I'm just going to pull on it and pull on the working thread until I can travel it up to my 11 O, just like that. Now I'm going to sew through this rondelle here and then into this one here and finish my flower by picking up two rondelles. And then I'm just going to bypass this 8 o seed bead in the center and go into the rondelle underneath the three 11 o's that are attached. Just like this, I'll hold on to the flower, pull this in tight, and then I'll start to sew through it and then I can pop my 8 o where I want it. So we're going to sew all the way around. I'll pop that little guy back up there. He's being stubborn. And it really doesn't straighten out until you get all the way around and into the first bead again beneath those 11 O's. Then you can really get some tension on it and straighten it up. So I'm going to just pop it up, pop up that 8 pull on my working thread, and there we go. My flower is together. Now I can sew back through to the two top beads. The issue with this particular design is that it twists and turns while you work on it and it's wobbly. So make sure that you keep one side up all the time, the side that your 8 seed beads are up. Or you'll look at it in a few minutes and you will have a flower on there that's upside down. Okay, come through this rondelle here. And now we're going to pick up an 11 0 seed bead and then we're going to go into the 8 0 just like this and pop the 11 0 down. Pull your thread back over to this side. We don't want to do a diagonal on this one or it will flip your flowers. So pull your thread over to this side again and then come into this bead with another 11 0. Then you're just going to straighten it out and pull on it until it's nice and neat like that. Now we have to sew around this flower again. So we're going to go into the petals on this flower. And they do travel through really easily. Just make sure you're not using a huge thread and you should be fine. Okay, so now I am to this little connection, so I'm going to go through my rondelle and through the 11-0 underneath it and through the 8-0, just like this. 
Now, this is where we do want to do a diagonal. Otherwise, if we just sew through one side, it pulls it weird. So now that we're in this 8-0, we're going to go into the 11-0 on this side. So we're going 11-0, 8-0, 11-0 in a diagonal now. And now, if I lay it out, you can see the difference in the connections. Let's get you really close here. And you can see that you have to connect differently on each one because of the positioning of the flowers. Now, our next one, we are going to sew down just into the side bead here because we have three on the bottom. So we're going to ignore this little guy and we're going to work out of these two and we'll make another unit. So we're going to pick up three 11 seed beads and an 8 and three 11 -0s. Then we can drop those down and decide what color you want next and I think I am going to do a bright purple. So I'm going to pick up my three rondelles boy those holes are just really difficult to see I'm sorry guys alright so I'm going to drop those three down and then I'm going to pick up an 8 so you've got your three 11 O's, your 8 -0, three 11 O's, three rondelles and an 8 -0. then again Position it to where you can hold on to this bead. So I'm putting my bracelet away from me. It's a little bit easier for you to see. Hold on to it where your bracelet is this way and then come back down into the first rondelle. Hold on to that rondelle and the seed beads and pull. And that should position you correctly. If it doesn't, like I said, pull on the 8 and then pull on your working thread. And you will be able to reposition it. Now we have to finish the rest of the flower. So we have to sew over to this bead here. So we'll go through this one. Then we'll go through this one. And then we're going to pick up two more beads. Oops, I gotta get the right color here. I've tried to pick up this one about four times and I can't get it. There we go. I gotcha. Now we're going to bypass the 80 seed bead and go into this bead right where the 110 seed beads are that are attaching that to the previous unit. Boy, that was a mouthful. Right through here. and pull these down. Make sure that your bracelet is up and start to sew around the beads. This really isn't tough. It may seem like there's a whole lot of steps to it. There really isn't. You just have to make a few units. You'll catch on as soon as you make a few. You can always back up the video and watch it as many times as you need to to get whatever unit you're doing. So now I'm all the way around, but I have to go ahead and bypass the 11 O's and travel around one more time. Because if you do not, if you just stop and then um, think you're all the way around and you don't secure the whole flower, it will split. So you need to sew all the way around it twice, basically. Okay, so now I've come around and I can attach to this bead here. So we want to pick up three 11 0 seed beads and then we're going to go into this 8 0 here. And then just hold on to it and pull that up. Then pick up three more 11 0 seed beads and then go into the opposite bead from the one that you're attached to. So this one 
is attached to, so we're going to go into this one. This one in the middle is going to be naked. We don't want to do anything to him. So we're going to go up to this bead and pull. And now we have our little X extension again. So we need to sew all the way down. So we're going to go through this bead here. And then we're going to sew all the way around this flower until we get to this bead right here and we can slide down the first three 11 O's, make sure you don't miss any, and then come out the 8 right here. Pull tight and then go in a diagonal, so go into these three on this side right here so hard to hold this and show you it just it's so wobbly so let me make sure I'm on the right side everything's good not twisted this is what this looks like so now that I have come through those three 11 O's I can go into my pedal bead pull this tight it's like this and now we're going to make the extension here we'll do one more and then we'll go to length. I just want to make sure that you know exactly what you're doing because I'm sewing so much it tends to be confusing. However, it is not a confusing stitch. So now that we have two beads on the bottom and three on the top, we know that we need to center in the two bottom beads. So then when we center in the two bottom beads, we pick up an 11-0, an 8 an 11 and then our three colors. So let's see, I think I'll go with blue. And now I'll go with this drabby purple color. There we go. So I'm going to pick up three of these beads here and an 8 And this is what we have, 11 8 11 three rondelles and an 8 We drop this down. Okay, I'm going to do this again away from me. So position your bracelet away from you. You can hold on to the beads better. Pull on your thread. Make sure this is up tight and then come through this first bead just like this. Hold on to that bead and the 11 O's between your thumb and your finger and then just pull this up around. That usually positions it pretty nicely. Then we can sew back through these three beads here. So we're coming out of the rondelle. We need to sew through the two rondelles on the other side of it here. And then again, we need to finish our flower. So this guy is flipped, so let me flip him back over. There we go. And we're going to pick up three, or excuse me, two, rondelles coming out of this rondelle here and I'm going to go into this one here bypassing the 8-0 and then once I get it in there I can tighten this all up because it's all loose and see what I mean about the flipping so make sure you flip it back over tighten it up and here's my problem I'm loose and you're bound to run into this so I'm going to pull those two rondelles out of the way I'm going to pull on my 8 and then I'm going to pull on my working thread okay pull on the two rondelles then tighten your 8 and then pull it down now if you need to you can just take let's do this because this is going to be an issue, so I just want you to see how to fix it. Just take it off. Take off those two rondelles. Okay, and now it's all spread out and it's all weird. I've taken off those two rondelles. I'm going to pull on this 8 and my working thread. And draw it all back up. Just like that. 
takes a little bit of manipulation, but you can do it because you're going to get frustrated if you're sewing through like I just did and it loosens up. You can fix it, so don't freak out. Just if you need to move those rondelles away, move them away and um, fix it with the 80 and the rondelles that are around it. And then pick up your two rondelles and go into the bead on the other side of the 80, just like this. Now we're going to sew all the way around it. And as you come through, you want to bypass those 11 O's that are attached to it go into the crystal on that side and then come all the way back around before you attach your second half. That pulls your crystal completely together here. Now I want to pop my 8O up, tighten my crystals like this. <clears throat> And then I'm going to come through this top bead right here. So I'm again in the middle of the two top beads right here. And I'm going to pick up an 11 0. And then I'm going to go into this 8 0 here. Pull it down. Then I'm going to pick up another 11 0 and go into the crystal on this side, the previous unit. The other side is already attached, so we're going into this side now. And this is what this looks like. Now, again, we have to sew around, come through this crystal, the 11 0, the 8 0, and the 11 0 in a diagonal. Now there are much easier flower bead bracelets on my channel if this looks difficult to you. It's really not difficult. It's just you have to do a little bit of manipulation, but the end result is well worth it. Okay, so now I'm going to come through this 11 0 here. I'm coming through the crystal. As you come through the crystal, it's easier if you come through the 11 0 too. But if you didn't, pick up the 11 -0, pick up the 8 -0, pick up the 11 -0, and the crystal on the other side. And then we'll sew down into this side bead. Now, you know because, let's straighten it all out. So once you lay it out, because you have three beads on the bottom half, and you've just gone through the top half and split it in half, you know that you have to come out a side bead and you need to do your unit with your three 11 O's, 8 O's, 3 11 O's, and then pick up your three rondelles. And then come back through and attach the other side. So you can back up the video and watch the unit several times until you figure out exactly how the pattern works. And then we're just going to continue making these until we have 11 flower units. And then we'll be back. Okay, so now I have my 11 units. And you can see when I ended, I've ended on a flower that has three on the bottom. And when I started, I started on a flower that had the two on the top. So I have to do my clasping closure on this end a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick, pick up my three 11 0 seed beads. I'm coming out of the side bead like you would if you were going to attach another flower with the X extension. So we're going to pick up three 11 0s and then we're going to pick up two 8 0s. And we're going to drop it down. Then we're going to pick up our clasp, well, not that. <laughs> I'm going to pick up my jump ring. I'm going to make sure it's closed very tightly. This is a heavy gauge, stays nice and tight. So 
either use that or use some um, wire guardians or you can use a closed jump ring. Let me make sure I have a good one here. This one's closed pretty tightly. Let's see, this one's better, I think. So I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to go up through my jump ring. drop it down and then I am going to go through my two 80 seed beads right here and pull this down <clears throat> then I'm going to pick up three 11 0 seed beads and I am going to go through the opposite bead on the opposite side so let me get you in a little closer here so you can see what I'm doing so I've come up through here I come down through the two 80 s and now I'm going into the bead on the opposite side here just like this and now I can sew around this unit and I'm going to add a little 15 0 right here as I sew around just because I think it needs it so I'm going to put a little 15 0 here and you can do that on any of these units as you're sewing up around if you want to sew an extra time you can put a 15 0 between these beads just on the ones with the small X this closure here or this extension here. So I'm going to put this 15 0 here and pop it down. Looks a little better. And then I'm going to go up through my ending again. Up through the two 8 0s, through the clasp, back down into the two 8 0s and the three 11 0s on this side just like this <clears throat> and now I'm just going to sew around the entire flower and come back through my clasping again so go ahead and sew all the way around and after we've come back through the clasping at least one more time you can do it twice if you'd like I'll show you how to tie off and we'll be done with this project okay so I have sewn all the way back through again and I'm coming out of this little bead right here I am going to grab this thread bridge between the two beads if I can get my needle between them it's pretty tight so there we go I got it between I'm going to pull my needle through and create a little loop right here. And then I'm going to go up through the loop and then I'm going to pull that down on the thread bridge. And then I'm just going to sew all the way around to this side here and maybe tie again here. And then I'll just sew through a couple of beads and call it good. <clears throat> So I'm going to try to go underneath this thread bridge again. Pull this down and then I'll sew up this bead here. Just to get away from my knot, I'm just going to come all the way back around to the other side. And like I said, it's easy to pass through these beads even if you have a million passes. It just works well. I don't know if these have little bit larger holes or it's just the positioning of them but seems to work okay so now I'm going to cut that off and melt it down and now I'm going to see how long this is <clears throat> I'm sorry you guys if this was a confusing tutorial it's been a really rough project for me to do because I'm I think I'm starting to get sick and it's just been I I just struggled the whole time so I hope this um, tutorial comes across well it's really not a hard project it's just um, it's just fumbly and it takes a lot to keep it in your hands and keep it going well but the stitch itself is pretty straightforward so this is a seven and a half inch bracelet just so you know I put two 80 seed beads at the end here to get a little bit more length you can also not do that you can put just one you can use a smaller clasping than I did I have a pretty large lobster claw and ending 
so you can adjust it that way you can also of course do less units that would work fine too I'm going to put this on my wrist and come back and show you what it looks like I'll be right back okay this is what it looks like and here's my clasping this is actually a little bit big for me I could have gone maybe just to the seven instead of seven and a half inches but that's okay it looks really cute and um I want you to see it close up it's just really really cute now of course you have the little threads that cross over on this daisy chain, chain type stitch you'll always have those little threads but other than that sewing around it and keeping it really tight it keeps it to where it doesn't appear to be really thready and it's really substantial feeling I mean it doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart in a minute it's not loose it's really pretty so that's kind of the reason that we sew through so much but there you go there you have it I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I'll be back with more we'll continue working on the um, sparkling romance treasure bag and then we'll move into some other things also I'll try to get a few things up as quickly as I can and sorry guys I really don't feel well so I'm gonna say good night and I will see you in the next one bye bye